Last week, Ed Miliband ruled out a coalition with the SNP, but that was never on the cards anyway. But he didn't rule out a more informal confidence and supply arrangement. We're joined now by the leader of the Scottish uh, Labour Party, Jim Murphy. Jim Murphy, welcome back to the Sunday Politics. Good morning, Andrew. Uh, Labour used to dominate Scotland. Now it's on life support. Why? Well, the Labour Party hasn't been good enough or strong enough in previous years, and, and that was clear. Um, we had uh, three, three months or so where we were doing things differently, and I think there's a real sense of optimism. Of course, the polls haven't turned around in Scotland, I know that. We're way behind in the opinion polls in Scotland, but the party is re-energised, pretty determined, and we've moved away from a, being a party where people perceive this to be against everything, and actually coming up with a pretty radical program for a manifesto, which I think the nearer we get to the election will narrow these opinion polls. But I wonder if, I know we're going to get into a conversation mm -hmm. about coalitions and all that sort of stuff. I wonder if I could do the revolutionary thing and say that we're determined to try and win the election. No, I understand We're, 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 getting, into this, we're into this to come first, of not, course, to come, not, to come, not to come in a near it, draw. Everybody is. But what is the grounds for your optimism? Because, I mean, you've now been Scottish leader for three months. And the polls are exactly where they were before you became leader. They still show the SNP heading for a landslide, Scottish Labour heading for the knacker's yard. Why have you had no impact? Well, the reason for my optimism is that the conversations we're having with a lot of the undecided voters who um, a month or so ago were determined to vote SNP. And, and, at, the moment, at, the, and, and at the moment, probably this group of voters are more inclined towards the SNP. But they're listening to the Scottish Labour Party again because we've got some things to say. We've got a pretty radical agenda on tax and on welfare, on zero hours contracts and investing in the NHS. But they're looking at all of that and then realising, I think people are coming more to the understanding that the biggest party gets to form the government. So while Ed Miliband rightly ruled out a coalition with the SNP um, a few days ago, there's now a sense that it's either Labour or Tory. You cannot vote for a Labour government by proxy. You cannot vote SNP and expect to get a Labour government. It's but, one or the other. But you're not just failing to stop the rot. Your own personal ratings are now on the slide too. 51% think you're doing badly as Scottish leader. It's not going well, is it? Well, we've got a long way to go. I've said that. If these, well, you're if going these in polls, the opposite direction. If these polls are repeated on election day, um, this will be a bloody awful showing for the Scottish Labour Party, but much more importantly, it'll be a dreadful day for Scotland because by accident, we'd re-elect David Cameron because on the basis of, what is it, 1924 is the last time the biggest party didn't form the government. David Cameron would cling on to office. He'd be an accidental prime minister. And if the SNP helped save David Cameron's skin, the SNP would feel the full fury of Scots for years to come. Because, really? Look, yeah, of course, of course, because at the moment... <laughs> At the moment, well, they don't seem to uh, care at the moment. I mean, many SNP voters tell me they don't really see any difference between you and the Tories, and they don't care. They want a big bunch of Scottish nationalists in Westminster to hold you all to account on Scotland's behalf. Well, what, they, what Scotland's been told at the moment by the Scottish Government and by the SNP is that you can get a Labour government by not voting Labour. We've been told that if you vote for the SNP, you can get a Labour government. Now, that defies any logic. You can't get a Labour government by proxy. And the fact is that we've ruled out a coalition. And of course, the SNP's argument is that, well, the more SNPs they have, they think that they can influence the Labour government. The fact is, the SNP have already said they wouldn't put in, they wouldn't support a Tory government. So they don't have many bargaining chips well, in then, their hand because the fact is they couldn't bring down a Labour government. If there's a, if there's a, Labour Party is the biggest party. The SNP don't have power over a, Labour, over a Labour government in that sense because we know that it couldn't bring down a Labour government. The last time they did that was 1979. Yeah. Mrs Thatcher followed in office all those years of damage. Our history and our yeah. politics could have been so but, much different. But it's win-win for the Scottish nationalists. I mean, either they are the, the party, as Mr Salmon said this morning on the Marshall, that if, if you hold the balance, you hold the power. So either they hold you to account as a minority Labour government, or at some stage they vote against you and the, there's a minority Tory government formed and that's exactly what the SNP want because then they can tell Scotland once again you get a Tory government you didn't vote for. It's win-win for the nationalists. Well viewers of a certain age will remember, you will Andrew, I'm a oh, little bit, you. I'm a little bit too young to remember um, personally but that in 1979 the Labour government was brought down in a vote of no confidence in the House of Commons by one vote. Every single SNP MP joined with the Tories to bring down that Labour government by it was one at the vote. End of its now, anyway. The fact is that the SNP brought down that Labour government, and I'm determined they don't get to prevent this Labour government. And the fact is, 
But they, they got the SNP, but they got if they were to bring, if they were to bring down a Labour Tory government. government, Jim Murphy, and over the 13 years of Thatcherism in Scotland, uh, the SNP got stronger and stronger, and the Tories got weaker and weaker. They win either way. Well, I'm not to be held to account for the near death of the Tory Party in Scotland. No, of but course, you might but soon be. For the near, you might soon be no. for the near death of the Labour Party. No, the, the, the it's Labour going Party, the same way as the Tories. The Labour Party has been written off so many times before. Where the party have traditionally been the party of or the underdog. And this election, of course, we are the underdog. Indeed. And that's an unusual situation for the Scottish right, Labour well, Party. Let me ask to you in. This. But I am look, we can turn this round, Andrew. And the argument is a pretty well, straightforward one. The country needs change. If you vote SNP in Scotland, you will by accident help David Cameron but, cling on to power. And that's the last thing that Scotland wants. All right. I would suggest you people are fed up being told if you vote for one thing, you get another. The Tories are saying if you vote for Miliband, you vote for UKIP, you wake up with Ed Miliband. You're telling us if you vote uh, for SNP, you'll wake up with David Cameron. No, Andrew, I'm well, telling well, you the biggest, I'm telling you the biggest party gets to form the government. Us. Why don't politicians just tell us that if we vote for you, what do we get from you instead of... Andrew, the other side. Andrew, you know, every time I'm on your program, I try to do that, and you keep interrupting me. You say, spare me the list. Let's get to the soap opera of politics. Let's talk about coalitions and what happens after the election. I can give you the long list, but we've only got a few minutes left, so oh. I, I don't think you would thank me for that. But the fact, like, so we have got an agenda okay. about tax and welfare and zero hours contracts and much else besides, but we only get to implement that if the Labour Party wins the election or if we're the biggest party. All and right. the truth is, Scotland is being told at the moment that you can get a Labour government by voting against the Labour Party. The SNP are saying vote SNP in Scotland, Plaid in Wales, Green in England. The SNP have put themselves at the head of an anti-Labour coalition and Scotland right. will see through that. Why did Ed Miliband feel he had to rule out a post-election coalition with the SNP when the SNP had already made it clear that it wasn't interested in a coalition? Well, who knows what the SNP well, have made it clear. Well, they've made it clear they don't want to call uh, it. Even, even today, they're still talking about conference and supply and a yes. vote by vote, and a vote well, by vote case. All right, case. Well, but the reason, why, the, reason why, the reason why Ed Miliband said what he said is that I and he and others had said we don't need, don't want, don't expect and aren't planning for a coalition with the SNP, but not unreasonably. You and others kept asking the question, so to oh, put yeah. it beyond any and all doubt, no, no. we went <laughs> from no need, don't expect, don't want, not planning, I've never asked into ruling, until ruling out Entirely a I have never with the asked SNP. any Labour politician if they ruled out a coalition because it wasn't on the cards. What he didn't rule out, Mr. Miliband, was any kind of post election arrangement with the SNP. Any kind. He didn't rule that out. He didn't rule out a confidence and supply arrangement, which the SNP have said they're up for. Would you care to rule that out this morning? Well, I'm not getting into further detail of a post match analysis of a contest that hasn't yet taken place. And I'll say again what I said right at the beginning. We're in this contest to win, not to have a near draw. Well, we know but, that. But the fact is, if Labour, if Labour becomes the biggest party, what do the SNP do? Do they walk, look the other way? Do they threaten to introduce a Tory government? The fact is, we will put our manifesto to the House of Commons. The SNP can vote for it or they can vote against it. But you could if they do, vote but against but it, it would herald in a Tory government. you doing any kind of post-election deal. You won't rule that out. Uh, you've, you've ruled out a coalition, but that's an Aunt Sally. That was never on offer. But the one thing that could happen if Labour's the largest party and the SNP hold the balance of power would be a supply and confidence arrangement with the Scottish Nationalists. But this morning, you tap dance round any answer to that no, question. I, Andrew, my size 13 feet, I can't tap dance round anything. All right, well, I, you clap the round it. But the, 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 the truth is, if we're the biggest party, we will put our positions on the minimum wage and the living wage, on zero hours contracts and much else besides, we'll put them in the vote in the House of Commons. If the SNP vote for that, that's nice. If they vote against it, that's their mistake. Excuse because if, if we can't get a majority in the House of Commons, of course, the SNP would then be responsible for bringing down so a Labour, a Labour government on. in that but situation. Be, which they did, they did, on, Andrew, which they did well, once before. No, no, you've said that. That's history. It's 1979. It would now be a habit. Trousers. Nobody and, cares about Andrew, that. Andrew, to do it twice you, would be a habit. It wouldn't be an accident. tell me this morning that Mr Miliband will undertake no discussions with the SNP if he's the largest party on an informal supply and confidence arrangement. Well, can I, can be, can, I can break the news to you that we're trying to win this election and oh, trying you said to that get the majority isn't and we're then trying to be the biggest party. Isn't beyond your that, failure beyond to that, answer Andrew, this question why, why the public, why voters are increasingly disillusioned with politics? I ask you a, a straight question 
that demands a straight answer and you just try to get round it. That's why no, people no, are Andrew, fed up with the Andrew, that's politicians. Not what, that's not what's happening, and I know why you have to say that. The fact is... Well, you haven't answered going to, the question. But Andrew, we're having an election. We're going to try and win the maximum number of votes. We're going to try and win a majority. And we can't have an election, surely, with the whole campaign and the whole contest and the whole debate is based about what happens after the election. Let's have the contest. Let's do the, let's do the voters the justice having some big ideas and some big, big debates about some of the big issues. Then see what happens after the election. People have but the if right between now, if, Andrew, if between now right and polling day... People if you're Andrew, the largest party, are you going to deal with a party that wants to break up the United Kingdom? It's Andrew, perfectly we've said already before there wouldn't, be, there wouldn't be a coalition and there wouldn't be a deal. But if between now and polling day, well, all we do is discuss deal. about what's happening after polling day, it's going to be a pretty rotten election okay. campaign. Let's have a contest about the big ideas about public spending, public investment. How do we make the UK stronger here at home? How do we eradicate poverty? How do we project influence across the world? Let's have those big discussions. Then let's debate after the election what happens after the election. This thing about who does what with whom the day after the election is fascinating for you, fascinating for the Westminster village, but real people who live in villages, towns and cities across this country want to know who's going to help them get out of the zero-hours contract and the jobs where they don't get paid enough wages. So I'm going to keep banging on about those issues. You'll keep asking questions about who's going to play footsie with okay. whom the day after the election. I'm going to concentrate on the real issues. All right. Just fine. You're standing for Westminster again, right? That's right, yes. Uh, are there any circumstances now in which you wouldn't run for Holyrood next year? No, I'm, I'm determined that I will be the Scottish Labour Party candidate for First Minister in 2016. And, and that, you... that election in 2016, incidentally, of course, is the big election between sure. Labour and the SNP. That's I, a two horse race there. You, if you're and the election elected for the UK Holyrood, is a Labour versus Tory if you're, contest. If you're elected to Holyrood, do you immediately resign from Westminster? Well, I've said before to you, Andrew, and I think you've asked me this sort of question before, it's a really and boring answer to a pr pretty predictable question, which is that those sorts of things I'll announce to my constituents first. Well, not they're watching all, not, now. Not Tell them of, now they're all watching in East Renfrewshire that's exa now. That's exactly Tell what them. you said the last time when I said this, Andrew, is that yeah. not, they're, not, well. they're not all watching. Some are having their breakfast and having right. a lazy Sunday morning. They're not, not all so watching they don't, the people of East Renfrewshire don't know if they're electing you for a year or for five years. That's the answer. I'll make that clear to them at the election. Okay. Jim Thank Rafferty, you, Andrew. Thanks very much.